Humana is our spectral editor, but it is also our primary filter, our graphic EQ, our vocoder, and even something more. Fumana slices any sound spectrum into 16 bands whose amplitude you then modulate in many ways. You can perform subtle changes, like manually adjusting the trebles in the same way you do with an equalizer, or you can bring the control voltage into play and create infinite timbral variations. You can also use another section of Fumana to slice a second sound and obtain 16 envelopes that will automatically transfer its timbre to the first sound. We shot a frap talk to discuss the spectral editors in general, as well as the design behind Fumana and some way of using it. Check it out if you want to know more by clicking to the top right corner of the video or the link in the description. Today we will focus on a detailed walkthrough. Fumana works with two arrays of 16 bandpass filters tuned to fixed frequencies, some inputs and outputs and many control options. The first filter array is what we control from the front panel and directly affects the sound patched to this input here. The second array is under the hood and can modulate the main array. When we patch a sound through Fumana, we control the amplitude of every bandpass filter to shape its spectrum. We can control the bands through the sliders, through CV, through the microcontrollers or through the second array of bandpass filters labeled in grey. Let us start by patching a harmonically rich sound to either blue input. Then we will patch the all output to our CGM mixer. For now we will keep these knobs at noon. We can now shape the sound through the faders. When they are all down, the sound does not pass through. We can also hear the individual band's sound through these outputs here. The sound comes straight from the filter, so its amplitude is never affected by the slider position or other modulation. You may see that the even bands have a circle around them. Actually, we can see these circles on anything related to the even bands. They, of course, help us distinguish the band while playing, but they also reflect a more profound feature. Fumana allows us to split the odd and even bands and use them separately. So, if we use either of these outputs instead of the all output, we can hear just the odd or the even bands, respectively. With a very suggestive result, we can blend them again using the quad steer channel or the steer channel in crossfade mode. Or we can keep the channel stereo and use the odd and even output to spread a monophonic source to the left and right channels. Please note that if we blend the odd and even outputs we don't get the very same sound as we used the all output. On this one there is an additional low pass filter that makes the sound a little bit more mellow. The odd and even combo will thus sound slightly brighter. It is possible to control the odd and even outputs phase through these two switches down here. Their default position is down. When we push them up, their corresponding output will invert its phase. It is an extra tool that can be useful for parallel processing or for more advanced feedback-based patches. But the odd and even independency also works for the inputs. By default, they are semi-normaled. If we patch a single jack to either of the two inputs, the signal is routed to all the 16 band, like we've been doing the whole time. If we patch two different signals, they will be routed to the odd and even bands, respectively. These two knobs that we haven't touched yet allow us to control the odd and even bands gain. In this way, we can use Fumana as two independent 8-band filter banks. We can also use the all out to hear the two separate sounds blended into one. In this sense, Fumana is the perfect mixer, since each sound fills the other sound's holes. So far, we have controlled our band's amplitude only through the faders, but there is much more. First, we can use any external CV and patch it to these 16 inputs here. 
In this patch we set Falistri in quadrature mode, and then we patch the unipolar output of both generators to control the amplitude of two bands. We then used the two end of rise gate output to control the amplitude of other two bandpass filters on Fumana. In this other patch we controlled six bandpass filters through six CV tracks on the Usta sequencer. The CV patterns have different rhythms and help us achieve a more complex rhythmic structure that goes along with our melody. Then we can control multiple bands at once through the macro controls. The tilt parameter is a sort of seesaw. It emphasizes the high end of the spectrum while attenuating the lower one, or vice versa. The middle point between bands 8 and 9 is almost untouched. Then we have the parametric scanning section. It creates a peak or notch across many bands. The three controls define the peak's gain, positive or negative, the central frequency and the peak or notch width. We can use it as a scanner that may resemble the behavior of a single larger bandpass filter or a band reject filter. If we keep the width knob at its smallest value, we can even emphasize just one band, and if we rotate it to the maximum level, we can hear all the 16 of them, but only if the center control is at noon. All the macro controls that we have seen are voltage controllables with attenuators. This can lead to some advanced spectral processing. Every CV modulation is summed to the slider position. We can thus sum and subtract voltages to bring some modulation in and out, like here, where we use the negative peak notch value to temporarily mute some bands that are already individually modulated. Speaking of the individual VCA CV inputs, there is one last feature to explore, the spectral transfer. Remember when we say that Fumana has 32 filters? It is time to check the other 16. They are tuned to the same frequencies as the blue one we've been playing until now. They just have a wider slope of 36 dB per octave instead of 48. When a sound passes through them, every band feeds an envelope follower semi-normal to the corresponding blue band CV input. If a strong signal passes through a band, the envelope follower will generate a higher envelope, which will open the corresponding blue band's VCA. On a broader level, we can say that the envelope followers reflect the spectral intensity of the modulating signal and transfer its energy to the main one. We never have the chance to listen to the modulating sound, but we hear its effects over the main ones. The most common application for these circuits is the vocoding effect. Patch any rich signal to the main inputs and a vocal sound to the mod ones. You will hear that the sound footprint of my voice is now applied to the brass of oscillator and you can see the white LEDs of the envelope power flashing. The odd EI distinction also works for the modulator circuit, so we can add different gains to the hold just the odd this controls down here allows to find the other power duration, especially when I attack and release times to two integrators. The status of the other is also when set to the highest value. At this point, we have many options. We can modulate adjust the beyond or even bands by using the dummy cables to block the spectrum transfer on either of them, or by just using the modulators activator. We can modulate a single sound with two different sources for the modulating circuit. We can modulate the two sounds with two sources and use Fumana as two completely independent spectral processors. Thank <laughs> you.
As you can see from the dashed lines, the envelope followers outputs are semi-normal to the VCA CV inputs. If you want to know more about our interface design, check our FRAP talk, the link is here or in the description. This means that if we patch another cable to the VCA input, we exclude it from the spectral transferring. However, if we patch a cable to the envelope follower output, the semi-normalization is still active and we can also patch the envelope anywhere we want in our patch without blocking the spectral transferring. We can also perform some cross-patching like in the old analog vocoders and transfer one band's energy to another. The all envelope follower output is the sum of all the 16 envelope followers and we can use it for more dramatic effect like ducking the reverb or changing the carrier's timber. Here we patch the all envelope follower output to a section of the 321, which we then use to add a positive offset and to invert the signal. We then use this inverted envelope follower to duck either the reverb send or the reverb return. If we feel like our speech lacks clarity, we can use the unvoiced input. If we patch a sound to the unvoiced input, we will hear it whenever the modulator excites bands 14 and 15. These bands are mediated by the frequency and signal consonants. So if we patch a similar sound to the voice that they were provided by white or blue noise, we will have to manually the gas, and so on. If we make this coding session more intangible, we can also use the game known to have been made. Our good practice is feeding the unvoiced input with a copy of the non-living signal. We can patch any signal to it, like an oscillator, and excite it with any carrier, like the symbols of a drum loop or even another oscillator. Please remember, however, that every sound you patch to the unvoiced input will be filtered. If its frequency is too low, you may not hear it. The unvoiced input is excited only by the modulating signal. Any other control over the main sound will not produce any effect. We hope you found this tutorial useful and we'll see you next time.